Hi, welcome back to my Alan Bradley PLC test bench. Today we're going to do a little more on Flex I.O. modules. In this case, the 1794 IE12 and 1794 OE12. These are 12 input and 12 output analog modules. They do 4 to 20, 0 to 20, and plus minus 10 volts. So these guys are wired into the TB3G base. Now the G base has a set of ground terminals on it and it's also connected differently inside. When you're looking at the wiring diagrams don't just grab a TB3, grab a TB3 G is in George or G is in ground base. Um, they're configured differently for the analog modules. So I've got it set up here now on the bench. Um, input driving output on voltage and a little test program. Now once we're, I've shown you the, the uh, voltage program, I'm going to switch over to the current program uh, setting and move all the wiring over for testing the analog output on current. I've had it situation before where the voltage portion works but the current portion doesn't. That proves to me that there are separate channels for each one and separate uh, electrical components. So we'll get uh, switched around here, move things so you can see what's going on and we'll be right back. Okay back to the first step here. So here's what we here our setup is. We've got an AEMT module on Ethernet tied to our control logics chassis and processor. The analog input is here, the analog output is here. Now the wiring, when you look at them, and like I say, it's a TB3G base. And uh, let's see if we can get this close here. As you can see, the has chassis grounds connected here. Plus voltage, common, not connected, common for number 8, not connected, common for number 9. And here we have common 11 and 12, or 10 and 11, pardon me. So, as you can see, the configuration is different than your standard TB3 base. So, you have to make sure that you get it done right and you use the proper base. So, enough, enough on that. So, here we are. You can just get a little bit closer here. And I've got my meter tied across the uh, channel zero. And currently, move this over here. There we go. Uh, we're putting out 9.61 volts. And that's a setting of 30,000 in integer. So if we go to there, we're at 10,000 integer, which is 3.2 volts minus 3.21 plus 6 volts minus 6 volts minus 9.6 or part for me plus 96 minus 96 so we'll pick the middle here we'll go to 6.41 volts so it's great to see the meter movement and we can tell that channel is working but what's happening with the rest of the channels so what we do now is we go over here to the program and I've got a simple little setup here. I hate problem with, with doing this on a small screen. So here we go. So what I'm doing is I got my test switches move over here so you can see it and uh, we're just moving in a number into the uh, module plus and minus so in this case we want 20,000 which is plus 6 volts and we put that into channel 0 then we copy it into the balance of the channels and then this is where we find out and do our confirmations so here is, let's get this uh, back just a bit, there we go. Um, 
These are our 12 input channels. Each one of them, you can see the numbers are plus minus a, just a little bit. The output is currently sitting at 20,000 and we're reading from 19,994 to 19,995. So that is really close. And uh, so 6.406 decimal something something. So we know that all of our channels are working. We change to a different one. In this case, minus 10 volts. Sorry for that. And uh, you can see everything steps to that uh, location, which is minus 29, minus 30,000. So all of those channels are good on the output and voltage and the output in, um, and the input to the module. So what I'll do now is I will go back to the module here and we're going to change the wiring. Now you can see right here this is our this is our voltage output. 0 is our current output. And so the odd numbered terminals. So what I have to do is change all the wiring so that we have all of the analog is all on the same thing. It's just so much easier to uh, test everything when everything's the same. So I'll just pause the video right now and be back in a minute or so and uh... okay here we are we're back. Now I've changed the wiring over so that everything is now on the current outputs of all channels and just because I've got uh, my old analog meters up there I've tied one of them in series on channel 0. Now first off we'll look at the screen here and hopefully you can see that the current the input on all of those channels is the same um, change to a 10,000 output and we get after it calms down a little bit. These are a little slower than uh, I thought they would be. Everything settles in quite quickly. So we've proved that our current channels on all 12 channels, go over here, they're all working. So that means at the same time, because each channel is wired back individually, all of our output channels are working. So if you're testing these things, best to do it on a bench. Take your time, take you an hour or so to get everything set up if you're doing it from scratch. And um, you'll have a lot more success in having good quality settings. And like I say, here's the... Uh, oh, not steady holding it by hand. Okay, we're... There's about seven negative. There's 13 and 19. So 10, 20, and 30 on the uh, integer outputs. So there we go. Um, come back anytime. And like I say, subscribe if you'd like. And uh, hopefully it won't be as long until my next uh, video. Just been uh, caught up with a whole bunch of stuff here lately. So there you go. Uh, subscribe if you'd like and come back often. Thank you.